Walker. What's up guys? Kevin from Epic Gardening here. Back with Stephen Cornett of Nature's Always Right. What's up everybody? We're hanging out in his badass greenhouse from Bootstrap Farmer, yep. which we just did a little bit of a talk on, on how he set it up, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're actually talking about seed starting and the many different trays that exist to get that job done and kind of Steven's approach to it. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna let Steven lead the way here and he's just gonna talk about some of these different trays and maybe you'll learn something as far as how you might be starting your seeds this spring. All right, so here we have uh, basically three different ways to start your seedlings here. So we'll start with kind of the most traditional way. This is your standard plug tray, 72 cell. And here's the version with it planted, with the plants in there. Each one of these trays has essentially the same plants planted at the same time. And I'm doing a comparison video on my channel to really see the differences in the root structure once I go to plant them, and then also how they react to planting afterwards. So we're really gonna get to see a good comparison about which is the healthiest way to start your seedlings. Now, with the plug trays and with this one here, this is the Never Sink Farm uh, wind strip tray. And the wind strip tray is pretty cool because it has the same effect of the soil blocks, but the soil blocks are a lot of work to make. Um, the wind strip tray here, you might be able to see there's a, a two slits in each little plug tray, plug, plug hole, and the bottom is quite open. And what this does when the roots try to spiral around, they can't. They hit the air, they either die or go back inside and just create a lot better root structure overall for the plant. And we can actually see that here. So it's really excellent root structure on this. Yeah, no spiraling really at all. No. And you can even see that's where the slit probably was. So it just stopped there. Yep, and then it, you can see it starts, it does sort of spiralize, but not really, because it just yeah. goes back into the center. Yeah, so really healthy root structure on those guys. Now if we take a look at our third thing here, this is a 1020 tray. This is also from Bootstrap Farmer. These make, they make the best trays ever. They're so strong. Um, the best way though to start your to start your soil blocks though is with a mesh tray. It's going into the tray dungeon. So yeah. So <laughs> something more like this. This is the best thing to do soil blocks on because it allows for the airflow on the bottom yep. so that it's gonna prune that bottom. You can also do the soil blocks in a 1020 tray as well. You just won't get the best air pruning effect. But we can take a look up the root structure on a soil block. Still pretty dang good. It's still really good. In fact, I would say it's really good. It's it's excellent. It's ready to go. And yep. there's, I love soil blocks because there's just so little transplant shock when you plant them. So with these, I'll show you just really quickly how you would plant them. So down here I have a soil mix. This mix actually I didn't make. It's from SunGrow or it's like the Sunshine Mix number four, I believe but it has really fine perlite in it. And when you fill these up, I'd learned this trick recently from Dawson of Jubilant Fields Farms, who learned this from Rose Creek. But basically you would fill this up and instead of like slamming it down and packing it down with another tray on top, you're actually just going to fill it and spread it out. Kind of loose pack it. Loose pack it. And the reason is now when I go to take my seedling out, like I just showed you, I didn't have to pop it from underneath. I can just pull it out because the root structure is so strong and it's not all like jammed in the, the cell so that you can pull it out easily. So it saves you a big step of having to poke everything out. So that's a really good tip I've learned recently for these trays. Let's take a quick look at the bottom of that windstrip tray, by the way. Sure. So it's actually a, a much bigger bottom hole too. Mm -hmm. So it seems like what Connor Crookmore did with the tray was effectively how little plastic can I use to create a solid tray, right? Yeah, and actually he didn't he didn't invent those. He got them from the, this company that no longer wanted to make them anymore. Mm. He took over the patent, I believe, mm. and now he's selling them. Smart. It was pretty interesting, and it's not. I know it's not a big money maker for him, but he so believes in how good these trays are and how easy they are. They're really strong. So I'm a big fan. I'm, you know, I'll probably switch completely over to these honestly because. Mm -hmm 
of the labor that it takes to make these. I still love soil blocks. I still recommend them for small gardeners, even small farmers. Um, they even make these in like a four, uh, 16 uh, size, so that you can make a lot of blocks at, at one time. Um, so with the soil blocker, you're gonna make a mix, and I have the soil mix recipe and video on my YouTube channel. You can check it out and, and how to make these, the full description of how to do all this. Um, but you're punching in the blocks, and you're making the blocks. It has a dibbler on the inside, so it makes it really easy to mm. plant your seeds. Yep. So it's really cool because when you buy the super strong trays like this, they last forever. You're not using plastic really to make your uh, seedlings. So that's a really great thing. You're, you're not putting more plastic into the ground. Um, and like I said, the soil blocks are basically the healthiest way that you can start seeds. So it's, it's really fantastic. Um, so those are three different methods that you can use. Maybe when you're, when you're sizing up going to something bigger, you can use something like this. Um, and this is after having been potted up in a soil block, Yeah, this right? is from yep. soil block to here. And then I'm going to let this grow till about this size when I can put it out to my grow bags and let them grow to full size. And they're adult stage where I'm going to get fruit. <clears throat> so I'm only potting things up like the, the summer fruiting crops, you know, eggplant, squash, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers. Got it. Things like that. Awesome. I mean, that's it. It's a pretty quick and easy summary of three different methods. I've never tried the wind strips. I might have to steal one from you yeah, and <laughs> give it a awesome, shot. Yeah, um, but yeah, guys, if you have any other questions about starting seeds, definitely refer to either Steven's channel, Nature's Always Right, or I've got a couple playlists as well. But where else can people find you? What are you up to on the internet, Steven? Um, if you want to see like everyday updates, what's going on behind the scenes before I even make my YouTube videos, definitely follow me on Instagram at Nature's Always Right. And then I'm posting on YouTube about twice a week. Uh, you know videos all about market gardening chickens you know runs the gamut from permaculture to business related farming as well yeah yeah I'd highly recommend it I think if if, if farming and gardening is something you want to do for a living uh, Steven's channel is a fantastic fantastic resource so definitely check it out we're definitely gonna be doing more videos in the future mm -hmm. so until then good luck in the garden keep on growing see you guys later